And, um, and I think about two things uh, when I think about movement building is that like, we've kind of signed up to do this for our entire lives. Um, and in some ways to expect that the change that we want to see will happen in our lifetimes. Not that we shouldn't try to make that happen, but if that's kind of our only goal in this work is to make the world better for us specifically, um, it is a bit of a selfish entry point and thinking about we might not get to see the change that we want to see in our lifetime. And that doesn't mean that it's not still essential and that we still shouldn't be putting in the work to, to get it done. And so we got to think about how can we have longevity um, in social justice work. Um, and part of it is I think there's got to be, um, there's got to be some self-interest. Um, and not in like a, a selfish way necessarily, but in a way that um, you should find some kind of sustainability and some, um, some interest in, in the strategies that you are choosing to, choosing to engage in. Um, and so I think it's really important to think about what are we actually good at? Uh, what are we not good at? And, and what do we actually like and, and not like to do? Um, because this should inform us as far as where we should be um, or where, where we can be most effective and most effective long-term. Um, and so I want to take two minutes. Uh, so break out your writing utensil. Um, you can tell that it's what used to be a, a high school teacher. Um, so break out your writing utensil. And I want us to, to think about um, assets and, and limitations real quick. And so for two minutes, I want you to think about your interpersonal assets. Um, and you can just jot down some notes. So what are some skills you have in relating to, to other people? Um, are you a good listener? Are you a good talker? Um, are you empathetic? What are skills that you have uh, with other human beings, right? Because this is, this is human-centered work. Um, we're not just doing this in silos. We are building with other people, uh, some of whom we will get along with really well some of whom we will agree with on a, on a, on a vision, but we won't get along with, um, and some that we won't agree on the vision or the process, and we don't get along with, right? But we are engaging with all sorts of folks, and so we gotta think about what are our skills in this realm. So take a minute to two, I'm gonna put my timer on, and write down what are your interpersonal assets, and go. I just want to uh, remind all of our participants and viewers that this is a power mapping session. So you must lean into this work if you want longevity. So please take the moment and do the exercise. And thanks, Mr. Lee, for the uh, for the intentional exercise as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Thank you for putting this, putting this together. This is an important space um, that you've been creating all week. I appreciate you. All right, let's take about 15 more seconds, our interpersonal assets. What are some skills we have in relating to other people? <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna continue. If you're still writing, obviously feel free to, to continue to do that. Um, some of the assets that I put down for myself, um, I put that I can be pretty convincing. Um, pretty good at motivational interviewing, um, you know, which means that I'm able to ask somebody kind of a series of questions for them to kind of come to a conclusion that I would like them to come at rather than for me to just tell them. Because um, obviously if you're trying to get someone on the same page as you, 
uh, it's more effective if, if, if they can kind of get there themselves versus you, you pushing them there, right? So those would be two of, um, two of the inter interpersonal assets that I have. Um, I'd also say listening. I'm a pretty good listener. Um, and so thinking about like, how does that, how does that help us, right? But the next thing I want to do is we're going to go now to limitations or difficulties. What are some of your interpersonal uh, difficulties? What are the things that you struggle with um, in relation to other people? Um, I know for me, um, I'm impatient sometimes, um, and I can talk way too fast. Um, so let's take a minute. What are some of the things that you struggle with? Um, you know, is it, is it personal anxiety or social anxiety? You know, is it, um, you know, do your thoughts get jumbled up? What are some of the difficulties you have in relating to other people? I'm going to take a minute to write some of that down. All right. So again, if you're still jotting some stuff down, feel free to continue to do so. I'm going to continue to move, however. Um, so the next thing that I'm thinking about is, is intellectual assets um, and limitations. Um, and again, I, I think that one of the important things for me in stepping into our lane or our lanes, because um, often we, we have a lot, is that and I think this is, and I'm gonna just take a little segue for a second. I think this is particularly relevant in our age of social media where we kind of have like celebrity activists um, or celebrity, you know, intellectuals in, in a way to where uh, I, think it's, I think it's dangerous where people often will kind of maybe gravitate towards what makes a lot of noise or what's really visible versus what am, what, what am I most effective with, right? Um, and so I think that's one of the ways that we get folks into, into lanes where maybe they're not the most effective. Um, and that's why I think this is really important to think about really where, not just where do we want to be, but like, what, what are we best at and, and, and where are we most, um, where are we most effective? Um, and that, that answer will change, right? Like that won't be static because the world isn't static. Um, the movement or the call to action isn't static. Um, our own development isn't static. And so our lanes are going to, going to change, right? Um, I know for me personally, there was a, a number of years where, where did I feel like I was most effective and most, um, you know, where, and where I wanted to be most I was doing interpersonal work with, with young people as a counselor and as a case manager. Um, that is no longer true. Um, I think I'm a better organizer now. I think I'm better door knocking and engaging community. Um, I think I'm a better, uh, a better writer um, where I can kind of create uh, narrative um, and, and explain or create vision. Um, and that's maybe now where I'm most effective. And so that, those things are gonna change too, right? Like we're not gonna necessarily be in this particular lane for our entire lives. And I think in a lot of ways we shouldn't be. Um, I think we should kind of constantly be checking in with ourselves. Where am I most effective? Um, and where am I most fed, right? Um, which lane is feeding me in, in mind, body, spirit, and, and soul? Um, so the next piece I want to take a minute on is intellectual assets. What are your intellectual assets? 
Um, for me, I'm, I'm creative. Um, I can see big picture, uh, visionary, um, linguistic. Um, I'm good with language. I'm good with words, right? So what are your intellectual assets? Uh, so let's take a minute on that. All right, I'm gonna keep the clock running. Uh, let's move now to intellectual um, limitations. Um, you know, where do you where do you struggle at in that regard? I'm really bad with math and numbers, right? Um, and and kind of an organization. Uh, I will try to create a bunch of systems that are really complex and not that efficient, and like try to reinvent the wheel sometimes. Um, you know, so if things need to be kept track of or any math needs to be done or that sort of thing, that's not going to be where, where I'm most effective. Um, I can also get, get a little ahead of myself and move too fast in like the big picture way that I can, that I can miss out on details. So think about what are some of your intellectual uh, limitations or, or difficulties. Um, and also, this doesn't necessarily mean that like you shouldn't be in this particular realm. Um, but it's something to be aware of to where you can be checking in with yourself to where if I know I can get really big picture and miss out on, on some details um, and go a little too fast, then maybe when I'm visioning, I've got to kind of slow down and check in with folks. Um, so intellectual limitations or difficulties. All right, so if you're still writing, feel free to continue to do so. We're gonna move on to the next, the next one. Um, I wanna think about creative or, or maker um, assets um, and skills. To me, and I know Adrian Marie Brown thinks about, uh, you know, talks about this a little bit, um, but that like movement building and, and social justice or revolution is kind of an act of science fiction. Um, we're imagining a world that's never existed, right? And we're actively trying to build that, you know? And so in part, we have to get other people to, to join in on this imagination work. Um, and then we have to change the material conditions of our society to, to reach this, this world that we, are, that we are imagining, okay? Um, and so this is creative work, right? Whether we're in the streets protesting, um, whether we're door knocking, whether we are calling meetings with, with community members, whether we are um, gathering resources and providing those to community, um, uh, regardless of what our lane is, it's all creative work, right? And we have to come to it with a certain amount of imagination. So think about what are some of your creative or maker assets? Um, you know, for me to give a couple of examples, um, I'm, I'm good at writing, right? I'm a good creative writer, poetry, 
some effect of his speeches, uh, with campaign literature, scripts, um, that sort of thing, right? So think about what are some of your creative assets? All right, so let's take maybe 20 seconds to, to finish up that. Um, I'm gonna give, give an example, um, you know, uh, especially now during, during the fact that we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, you know, like I know both of my parents are, are in their mid, you know, mid 60s, uh, you know, and so are a little more up there in age and, and a little more at risk with, with coronavirus, but both have been wanting to be, you know, more active in, in, in protest and, and in, kind of in this moment, uh, you know, so I know my, my mom has been, uh, she's really good uh, with sewing, right? Um, and so she's been organizing folks in, on her block, uh, to, in her, she's like a sewing group, um, to make masks. Um, and so like every week she'll drop off like a bag of, bag of masks, and then I'll try to get them to somebody in the neighborhood or you can get them to, whether it's, it was um, the Sheridan shelter over south or wherever the masks need to go. Um, but that's kind of, a, you know, that's one of the examples of like, that's, that's what she's able to do. We need that work. That's one of her, her creative, you know, creative assets um, and, and putting it to use. So think about creative limitations, because um, we all have those as well. Um, let's take a minute and think about what are limitations creatively. For me, it's visual and spatial. Um, I remember when I was running at Open Mic for a couple of years at, um, at the, the youth shelter, when I was running the arts program there, uh, I would make a flyer that we would have a monthly open mic and we would have a, um, we'd have a featured performer, um, usually somebody from the community sometimes if I was lucky and somebody was in town for a, a feature at a college or, you know, one of the poetry slams, um, I could get somebody from out of town to come in. And uh, I remember the first open mic we had, we had um, Mike Wright, who is an a MC and, um, and, uh, and poet from Detroit. And he was in town and so I made this flyer. Um, and I was all excited, you know, I've been talking to the youth about this open mic and everyone, everyone was super, super excited and I had these flyers all over the place, um, all, all over the shelter, right? And then we get to the night of and like nobody came and I was like, man, like what, you know, I organized, I talked to folks, like, you know, what happened? Um, and, and folks got confused by the flyer because they thought the flyer was so bad, it, they thought it was a missing person flyer and not an open mic flyer. Right. Uh, so after that, I was like, okay, if part of my organizing is trying to get visuals, that is not my skill because nobody came because they thought that the flyer was a missing persons poster. Um, so let's take a minute, think about what are some of our creative uh, limitations. Let me just jot these down in notes. Uh, and if anyone's just joining us, welcome.
All right, so let's come on back. Um, the last two I want to think about, and we'll just throw them out at this point because at this point we're used to obviously we're doing, we're doing assets and we're doing limitations. Um, I want us to think about our physical assets and our physical limitations because this work, regardless of what our lane is, is often very physically demanding. Um, and we all have different, different, um, different abilities. And I think it's really, really important to, to think about that and to kind of not fall into an ableist, um, you know, mindset when we think about what kind of work in this movement is valuable um, or most valuable. Um, you know, for me, I know I have really good endurance. I can I just kind of go, 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 go. Um, at the same time, uh, I also have a traumatic brain injury. Um, so being around a lot of loud noises can like totally, totally shut me down uh, physically, right? Um, and so for me, like um, protests are not where I'm most effective because if there's a lot of loud sound, I mean, my brain basically, basically short circuits, right? Um, and so that's just not a space that I can, that I can really be of any use, honestly, to, to anybody. Um, and, and it uh, prevents me from being in other lanes where I'm more effective. Um, so think about some of your physical assets and some of your physical uh, limitations, uh, because this should also kind of cue us into where we want to be. So we'll take about a minute and a half to just kind of work on both of those. All right, um, so let's keep on moving. Um, it's so strange being on Zoom. Uh, I'm hoping that everybody is writing and stepping into this, but I have, I have no idea. Everybody could just be hanging out, like listening to me talk every two minutes and like playing PlayStation or something. I, I, I have no idea. So hopefully folks are engaging. Um, we'll find that out. Um, Got me engaged. That, all right, good, 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 good. If nothing else, it's me and Kais. I appreciate you. Um, also, again, just want to just another um, thank you to Kais. Um, you know, I met, I think we met a couple years back at a training at the library. Um, and ever since then, it's been really cool to just watch you build and move and shape things and connect people. Um, and uh, you've inspired me uh, a lot. And I've been really just excited. And, 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 and it's been really energizing to see you grow and, and to move. So I just want to thank you again for, for making the space for folks. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so this next part, um, I want us to just write down, um, uh, and again, I'm going to piece this all together at the end, but five activities that you just genuinely enjoy. Um, don't even try to think about placing them like in a social justice context necessarily. Like what are five activities that you would, that you, if you just had a Saturday all to yourself and you could do whatever you want, um, you would you would enjoy doing these five activities and just and just write those down. Let's take like a minute, ninety seconds to get those down.
15 more seconds with this one. <laughs> All right, so as you probably guessed, now we're gonna look at and document what are five activities you just truly dislike, you just do not enjoy. Um, again, don't even try to necessarily think about placing these like in a movement or social justice context, um, but what are those five activities you really do not like? Okay. All right. So if you've been with us since the beginning, at this point, um, we should have documented what are some of our interpersonal or relational assets? What are some skills that we have in, in engaging and relating to other people? Um, what are our difficulties in that area? Um, uh, you know, so for me, interpersonal assets, I'm just kind of go over these again real quick. Um, I can be convincing, motivational interviewing, uh, listening. Difficulties might be sometimes impatient, um, or if I'm, you know, sometimes quick to get annoyed, which sometimes undermines my skills. Um, um, okay. Then we think about intellectual assets. Uh, what are your skills mentally, um, and what are your limitations there? Um, you know, so imagination, big picture thinking, vision, limitations being um, math, sometimes organization, detail oriented. Um, Creative uh, or maker assets, uh, for me is creative writing, poetry, uh, cooking, um, your limitations for me, visual and spatial, as I mentioned. Um, if you got a flyer that needs to get made, you don't come to me because as I said, it's gonna look like a missing person's poster um, or like a weird, like syllabus. <laughs> um, physical assets, physical limitations. Um, you know, for me, I said uh, uh, stamina and being able to kind of push myself for long periods of time, limitations being uh, for me personally, traumatic brain injury uh, and dealing with noises uh, or a lot of really bright lights. And then for, for activities that you generally enjoy, um, I know I said five, I put a little bit more than five, I put driving, I really enjoy driving, I enjoy writing, um, conversations, I love gardening, exercising, reading. Uh, activities you truly dislike. I know I can come up with more. Um, I put being in crowds. I don't like math. Um, I don't like dancing. Um, I sound like a totally not fun person, which might be true. Um, but um, but I think it's important <laughs> for us to think. <laughs> I think it's important for us to to think about what are the activities we enjoy um, and what we would do if just given the opportunity to do them. You know, without any context right um if it's just a nice day and i have nothing to do like i might just go for a drive right i will write um i will call someone uh, or engage with someone in a conversation i will i will get in the garden i will work out i'll exercise i will definitely read right um things that i will just not ever choose to do i will just not ever choose to be in a crowd 
right? Like I will never go to the state fair. Um, I will avoid concerts um, to the best of my ability unless I can like sit far back from like an old curmudgeon man in this way. Um, I don't like math, like yeah, ever. I've never <laughs> enjoyed it and I'm really bad at it. Uh, I don't like dancing. Um, I'm also probably really bad at that, but again, the crowds thing and the loud noises, especially with the, with the brain injury, um, not, not something that, that I enjoy, right? So when we think about these things and both our skills, um, oh, I got a question. Oh no, Christ, that was you, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, so I definitely wanna, if you got questions, please put them in the chat. I'm gonna take a minute here to, to address some of them. Um, but again, when we think about what our lane should be, and again, like I said, it, it, it's gonna change. It's not always gonna be the same um, because the we're not static and neither is the needs of any movement, right? Like right now we're in the moment, we're in an exclamation, in a dynamic moment, right? Um, the world is watching, people are very engaged. Um, it is oftentimes, it, there's huge emotional swings I mean, y'all been out here. Um, we had the city on fire, um, violence from police, um, violence from white supremacist groups that, that are either in the city or came into the city, um, outside agitators, provocateurs. It's been an intense moment, but there's always gonna kind of be this ebb and flow. And so what are we doing in between those moments? Um, we got to make sure that we're able to do this for, for a long period of time. And so we need to be operating within our skills to A, be effective and operating within our joy um, so that we can continue to do this. Um, you know, one of the, uh, I, I saw Kais out, we were both doing community patrol. Um, you know, for me, which is my physical limitations and things that I don't like, you know, I've been doing uh, marches and protests for a long time. And I'm in that point in my life now, like physically, I don't, feel effective in that space and I don't I, I don't it doesn't feed my spirit in any kind of way and I think that I'm more effective in other places right so I didn't go to a lot of the protests um, but I was super active when we were talking about community patrol right I enjoy driving and I enjoy conversations and so I was engaging with community and driving all over the north side I think I put on like 1300 miles on my car in like a week week and a half period just just in the neighborhood right um was it difficult was it stressful was it dangerous yes it was all of those things um but elements of it were things that i enjoyed right um and elements of it were things that i was good at um and if there was nothing about it that i didn't enjoy the driving the conversations engaging with community um and if there was nothing in it that i was effective at um driving visioning conversation um then it would have been entirely impossible to keep up, right? Um, and, and it wouldn't have been an effective place for me to be, right? And so I think a lot of times um, we step into locations where um, they're the most visible. And because they're the most visible, we sometimes I think just naturally as humans interpret that they are the most important, which isn't to say that sometimes they're not, right? Um, or like, given moments that the most visible thing isn't the most important thing um, and where the most people need to be. But because there's an ebb and flow um, and there's, 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 there's dips and there's, there's, you know, punctuations and the work is never static, there will never be true forever that one thing is going to always be the most important piece, right? And so that's why it's really important for us to identify where are we most effective and also where are we fed physically, spiritually, mentally, um, that sort of thing. So I just want to check in with Kais real quick. Kais, did we have any questions on the Facebook or the or the chat? Not at the moment. Um, I'm okay, going to allow, cool. I'm gonna allow Penn, the attendees to talk, and they may uh, they may ask a question if they do have one. Great, great. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully we'll have some. Um, if not, I also want to say that just my email is Michael Lee Poet, M I C H A E L L E E P O E T at gmail.com. So if you think of a question, um, you know, later on or, or, or something you disagree with, right? Like it's not just like I'm not standing up here like, oh, I'm the expert, right? Um, 
I'm a community member that has a certain set of experiences and a certain set of skills and a certain set of shortcomings like everybody else who's engaging right now. Um, and so also too, if you've got pushback, like give that as well, because we're all trying to build towards, towards a better world. Um, and I want us to be engaging in multiple ways um, in that. So that's my email. Feel free to, to, to shoot me an email. Um, but yeah, so we'll give it another few moments here if anyone want, wants to jump in. So I wanted to ask, um, yeah, kind of any any um, advice or guidance you would give on making sure that you're building a team that uh, that is uh, kind of dedicated to a similar purpose, if that is the team that you want to uh, engage in this long in this long call with. Right, right. Yeah, well, and, and here's the thing too is that I mean I think um, you know there's this there's this saying um, you know that that will be in some organizer trainings that'll say you know no permanent friends no permanent enemies um, and, uh, and I I agree with that in some regard but I also think it is important to be in genuine friendship with the people that you are building with I also think that you can have multiple groups right because you you have multiple lanes. Um, Right. And so I think it, it is important to find folks that um, have your shared values um, and have your shared vision, um, but also have, have a similar, um, similar process or a complementary process. Um, you know, I think like some of, some of my um, group or public relations are very public. Some of the folks that I'm engaging with, I'm engaging in like a very low key way we're like we're checking in we're gathering intel we're building um but people don't know that we're building right um and that's part of maybe some of the work that we're doing um not everything needs to be public um mm -hmm. but i've got multiple kind of multiple communities or multiple groups with different lanes right whether that be an organizing group um whether that be like community patrol group whether that be um you know a youth um more youth oriented group you know folks who've been doing youth work for a long time and so i think um making sure you've got friends in those groups, um, know that those groups are not gonna be permanent um, only because, if only because our relation to, to this work is gonna change, right? Like you might, or someone in the group might be like, hey, I'm no longer effective here or fed here, I need to move around and, and that's okay, right? Right, right. Yeah. I believe yeah. Uh, Chanel Brown has a question. That was beautiful, thank you. Thank you. Chanel, do you want me to ask or are you going to unmute yourself? Sure, I can unmute myself. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hi, um, I'm Chanel. I'm based in between Georgia and California. Great. And my question is, I mean, I love the presentation. I love how you talked about really looking internally at your assets to be the most effective you can be mm -hmm. in the movement in this time. So my question to you is, do you have any best practices or tips around uh, organizations that want to work and coalesce together that have various skill sets, um, maybe mainstream organizations working with more radical organizations? Do you see an opportunity in that? And if so, you know, do you have any best practices about uh, coming together as one? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I'm going to try to answer it. So I don't, I don't know if this necessarily there, at least for me. Um, and again, I can only give, you know, my best answer. Um, I think a lot about like, sometimes there's organizations that you're like, Oh, I don't know if I really mess with this organization, but I love a couple people in it that I really, really trust. And so I think, I think there's kind of a acknowledging like which organizations like kind of top to bottom are really doing good work, which organizations do you have some, um, you know, real specific allies in, um, and then how are you relating to each to each organization, right? So I always think about like, there's everything somebody can know, and there's everything that somebody needs to know, right? And so if I've got two different organizations, and one I trust three people in, but the organization is an entity I don't really trust, um, and then there's an organization where I just everybody top to bottom I I, I really mess with, um, depending on what I'm doing. Um, they might not need to get all the information right from me. It's kind of what, what, am, what do they need to kind of move this ship forward or get it uh, kind of moving in, in the right direction. And I guess like to get to that point, 
I think one-to-ones are so important. Um, just identifying somebody, sitting down, figuring out what are your motivations? How did you get to this work? What are your, um, what are your principles? What is your vision? Um, and really trying to f- figure those, those folks out um, and kind of just like intensely interviewing um, people in, in community, honestly, um, and figuring out what makes them tick and, and kind of what role everybody plays, um, you know, to you. Um, because not every relationship is going to or has to be or should be a friendship. Um, you know, you might have somebody who like their whole role is to give you information um, and, and, then, and then you give them information of another kind, you know. And so I think sitting down and having those conversations to figure out what, what does this relationship look like um, and kind of what are, the, what are the parameters, right? What are we exchanging? How are we building? Um, and that, that sort of thing. I think that's excellent feedback. And my follow-up is what I've seen or what I've learned is that when you're coalition building, there can be a lot of cooks in the kitchen, right? right. Everybody wants to be at the forefront. And so I think <laughs> right. based on the campaign, based on the initiative, you know, one organization or two or three, whatever you all agree upon, mm-hmm. could be the forward-facing organization. And then the right. other organizations kind of take a back seat and support from behind based on right. skill set. So that's something I'm even practicing in my own activism work as well. Right. right. You know, that's a great point. And also too thinking about thinking about networks, right? I think that sometimes so there's the balance of like, okay, who's doing what work and not stepping on people's toes or getting in the way of, of somebody who's who's doing a particular job. Um, but then also understanding that that in a community no person or organization is able to reach um, everybody, right? And so thinking about like, if there's an organization and their prim- primary way of getting the word out is gonna be mailers and emails and social media, understanding that like, there's a whole group of folks that they're not connecting with. Um, and maybe either we can support that organization in doing some on the ground work, whether that's door knocking um, or just um, canvassing or whatever that might be to kind of get some of those folks there or say, hey, me and this other group, we're doing something similar, but who we're connected with is a different uh, demographic or a different group of people in the same community, and, and we're gonna do that work. Um, and we're gonna be a little bit more low key about it because that's just what's effective, right? Um, and so I think there's this kind of that aspect too is, um, you know, like you said, like not everybody needs to be on the forefront. A lot of folks wanna be, um, because I think we do live in a society that is very much like celebrity worship and you know, now with social media, like you have celebrity activists and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but again, kind of that, going back to that question of like, you know, who, what, why, where, when, what's gonna be most effective, who's gonna be most effective, um, that sort of thing. I really appreciate um, your, um, your contribution. That was really, that was really great, thank you. I am now checking the Facebook feed. Uh, Attendees, if you do have a question, you do have the ability to unmute yourself at this time. All right, nothing on any of the Facebook watch parties. Cool, cool. Um, So we've got like five more minutes. Um, Gosh, I. I'm really glad for the space, and I just so wish that um, that we could just be in in space together. Um, like this would be a moment where I'm, which is great because Chanel, you said you're between California and Georgia. You said, uh, yeah. So can you hear me? Okay, yes, yeah, I'm yeah. between Georgia and California. So okay. I'm occupying very different political spaces. Right. I'm in Northern California part of the time, and I'm in Atlanta part of the time. And so okay. super progressive, right, Northern mm-hmm. California. Mm-hmm. And then very, well, the state of Georgia is conservative, but the city right. of Atlanta is progressive. So I find right. myself in two different spaces, and it, it kind of makes me feel like I'm balancing multiple personalities at a time. Right. But I'm really, right. I appreciate being, you know, a Black woman working, organizing in the South, and also being a Black woman 
working and organizing in a liberal space in California as well. Right, right. Man. Yeah, well, I'm really glad that we have a virtual space because I don't think we would have been able to connect otherwise. Um, and, uh, and I also just wish we could all be in the same room and just keep chopping it up uh, once this time, time is done and get some stuff on the books. Um, but I do want to leave folks with um, a couple questions that we, I would like us to write down. And I'm, I'm not going to have us take time to, to write these answers now because I think they deserve a little more time than we have left. Um, but, oh, one more question. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is more of a thought um, for the whole body on the line right now. I feel that the news headlines are dominated by the demonstrations, right? And they have a very important place in this movement. We don't see the lawyers that are working around the clock to bail people out. We don't see the activists and the communicators, you know, working online all day to get messages disseminated and coordinating groups on the ground, right? So I just wish, and maybe you can, you know, share your thoughts. I wish there was more reciprocity and the appreciation for the folks who are serving behind the scenes. Uh, my, one of my political mentors, he doesn't even know it, is Terry Belafonte, right? <laughs> and he spent his life's work bailing out MLK. Right. He played a very vital role. He funded MLK. He paid for his home and for his family to survive. Mm. We don't see that story, and maybe it has its place in history that needs to be where it's kept. But I just wish there was more reciprocity for folks who are organizing in effective ways, but just not in the forefront. Right, right. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's a really great point. And there's kind of the double-edged sword of like, um, you know, and, and, and you, I think, you know, and, and, and jump in here, but I'm even just wondering uh, with, with Harry Belafonte is, did he want to remain somewhat anonymous during that time for his, for his own safety? Um, and if, if you know the answer, please let me know. Um, so I'm even just thinking about, thinking about that in, in, in the folks who are trying to kind of remain more low key on for safety reasons, um, or because keeping out of the public eye allows them to move more effectively and to, to make more good. And that same thing, you know, to your point, which I think is a really good one is the focus is on what is the most visible and what is the loudest, um, and how do we create more reciprocity for folks who are moving more quietly, who are in the background, but still doing really essential work. Um, and I think part of that is, is, is kind of on us to around cultural production. Um, and are we writing essays? Are we writing stories? Are we documenting with you know, photographs and disseminating this sort of thing? Some of what's happening on, on the ground and getting that word out. Um, I think that's really, that's really important when you think about like really highlighting some of the other work is that we can't rely solely on these media conglomerates to, um, you know, just to, to spread the message or to spread kind of all the levels of, of organizing and activism that are happening. And so I think a good question for all of us to consider is how are we within a mode of cultural production sharing some of this information and some of these stories? Um, and, and getting some of that, some of that out there. Um, so yeah, that's a really, that's another really great point. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Nope. I was just going to say, I know we're oh. coming close on time, but I think the main point um, that I've received is that we need to be keepers of our own history. Yes. And yes. we determine our own narrative yes. and there's power in that. And so we don't need to rely on a CNN to tell our own stories. I've seen organizations in California that produce their own community newspapers, right? Yeah. That yeah. is something that is vital or else how are you going to really inform communities with accurate information told in the way that you want them to be told? There's a difference right. in that, right? Right, <laughs> so right. I, I exactly. Appreciate your contributions and I'm so thankful to be uh, invited um, to this space today. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I want to throw out these last three questions for everyone to write down and, and, and to think about. Um, what is the world I want to live in?
what is the world that I want to live in? What does it look like, right? And I would love for folks to take some time today or tomorrow or next week and write honestly some pages. Or if you're a painter um, or, or you have some other mode of creation, construct that world that you want to live in. Because again, this you know movement work and organizing work is work of science fiction is that we are trying to build a world that's never existed, right? We're talking about abolishing uh, police and defunding and divesting from police. Um, you know, that's a world that none of us have ever lived in, right? Um, so we have to imagine that world to create it. The next thing, uh, question I want folks to, to write down and then to explore over, over the you know, next couple of days or weeks is, what are you willing to give? Uh, whether that's uh, financial resources or personal resources and space and time and skills, um, what are we willing to give? And the last question I want us to write down and consider is, what am I willing to lose or give up? Because there are obviously sacrifices in, in all this work, uh, whether it's time and energy, uh, whether it's opportunities, um, whether it's, it's life, right? Um, and so I think that's something we have to be very aware about and not even like a judgmental way. They're like, Oh, someone's not willing to give as much as somebody else. And, and but keep it, what are your boundaries? Um, what are you willing to give and what are you willing to lose? Um, and, and that question should be really, we should really take those seriously and be very honest about them. And those should really help cue us into like, what is our lane? Which lanes do we need to step into to be most effective? Um, and we should push our boundaries and push our comfort levels, obviously, but, but yeah, so those are the three questions I want us to kind of leave with and consider. What, what, what is the world that I want to live in? What am I willing to give to, to build it? Um, and, and what am I willing to lose or to give up? What a, what a presentation and what a, what, a ex, what a series of exercises. I'm really appreciative of you, Mike. Um, Thank you. Yeah, we met you. at the rebuild through that recast. I really yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Uh, um, it was, those were some great workshops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was at build at that time and it, okay. it's funny that you remembered that cause yeah, I just remember always seeing you. And then I also, uh, right. yeah. So just wanted to send a, a ode of gratitude and, and deep appreciation for Likewise. your willingness to come in, step in and be a buffer for the, for the, uh, very evident leadership gaps that we have intergenerationally and how we don't always get a lot of the game that is needed to prepare us for that transformative leadership and experience to build and the tools to build them up. So I just really am appreciative of you. And I want to say thank you on behalf of all the post millennials who may not say it to you. I want to say it to you on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, and I see you out here, man. You're doing, you're doing great work. Gratitude, gratitude. And with that, I will be closing our session. All right. Good day, everybody. <laughs>